Here I was again, with all hell breaking loose around another girl I had been trying to protect. This was a hell of a hangover. This installment of Max takes place several years after the events of Max Payne 2. A lot of time has passed, he's not a cop anymore. He's basically just trying to hide, and I think, uh, from his past and from the world around him. Events occur, make it so that he, he can't hide anymore, and he sort of has to uh, leave New York, and uh, he gets involved in working some private security for a, a rich dude in uh, Sao Paulo. This is Sao Paulo, brother. It's kind of fun, good pay. We keep people safe. Definitely wanted to feel like a Max Payne game, but we also wanted to feel like a very contemporary, uh, contemporary game. And so we really tried to recreate the uh, the feel that players would have had when they played the first games. We really just tried to keep the fundamentals of Max intact, but make sure that they held up to today's standards or move beyond what uh, what people would expect. Uh, well, as far as bullet time, uh, the fundamentals of bullet time haven't changed. I mean, it's a good mechanic. I think a lot of people uh, enjoyed it. A lot of people incorporated it into games uh, after Max. And so, you know, we didn't really want to change it too much. We made some additions and we added some new features that are sort of uh, based off, uh, you know, based off of bullet time. What we had to really do was make sure that the game holds up at real time because you can slow it down at any time and so Max's movements have to feel accurate, his weapons have to all uh, animate and work properly, the bullets have to be there when you're firing them because at any moment we could cut to a bullet cam where you're following the bullet to its target. The environment has to be highly destructible and the particles and the effects need to look great not only in real time but in slow motion. We wanted to add a cover mechanic because we felt that it would be odd to not, not include it in a game where the, you know, the primary thing you're doing is shooting uh, and not give players that option. The same reason that we added the, you know, the ability to sort of aim down the scope when you, when you pull the left trigger. But it's not, it's not a cover-based shooter. It's, it's, it's very much a run-and-gun type of game. The AI are equipped to deal with you hiding in cover, and different types of AI will handle you hiding in cover in different ways. We really want uh, you to be able to approach uh, a, a, a fight in as many ways as you can imagine. We've got different types of enemies, um, and so we want them to behave differently. And based on what the player is doing, they they react appropriately. If you're hiding, they start searching for you. If you're attacking them, they may fall back or they may they may push forward on you. It's just uh, trying to make them feel believable. As we started working on the game, we made decisions based on whether it felt like Max or not. For us, it was as much about retaining the feel of those games, and that's hearing Max's voiceover and knowing that it's his recollection of events that you are playing and his view on things. You're kind of in Max's head with him. It wasn't pretty, but I guess none of what was about to happen was going to be. I mean, we're trying to make it as long as makes sense uh, for the story and for the games. I don't think people are going to be disappointed with the length or the sort of the depth or the meatiness of the of the campaign. We love Max Payne as much as you do, and uh, we have only tried to do things that are true to the series and feel uh, feel natural. Make sure that you feel the same things you feel playing this one as you did with the old ones. We're not talking about multiplayer at this time, but uh, you know we're working very hard on it, and we think it's very special. So it's coming soon. Max Payne 3 is coming out on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PC in March 2012.